for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier. We've got the right price. Frontier. We'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors. Low overhead country. Uh, yes, indeed. And we are pleased to have, for your listening pleasure, the owner of that fine establishment at 230 Beverly Parkway. That would be Mr. Ivan Streckel, ready, willing, and certainly more than able to take any calls from you at 478-3116. Oops, sorry. We're on the FM today, 476-1007. 476-1007 would be the correct phone number. Add an 888 to that. If you want to make a long-distance call from out of the area, we'd be happy to talk to you if you want to get a price on a car, truck, or SUV you're thinking of buying or selling or trading in. So, without further ado, even though I messed up the phone number, good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning, Don. And this is a double format again today on uh, this lovely day. Um, the uh, We are be taping this also for our cable viewers out in the, I was going to say Pensacola area, but we're going out pretty much further than that being on both radio stations were on 1370 AM Radio Talk Radio, which is the oldest radio station in Pensacola. And also they've expanded to 100.7 FM, which has uh, which gives us at Frontier Motors the ability to uh, reach people that normally wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have reached before on FM radio. And the reason that you may want to give us a call here uh, if you're listening to this on the radio is because I can help you with the value of your car. And I'm not talking about the Kelly Blue Book or the NEDA um, uh, I'm talking more about reality values. I have the computer in front of me, and what, the way I'm talking about reality values is that I can get right into the Mannheim Auction Report, which is the largest auction chain in the world. We happen to have one right here in Pensacola. But I get uh, they compile the data of all the auctions, whether it be just in the South or nationwide or worldwide, and I can find out what I can buy a particular car for. And, for example, if the NEDA guidebook that your banker uses, which is in a gold-looking book like the one I'm holding up if you're watching this on TV, um, this is an NED guidebook that if you call Penn Air, Federal Credit Union, or if you call Gulf for Power, or any of the local credit unions, and almost all of the banks in our area use this little book. Unfortunately, you can't get this book on the Internet, but we do have it um, uh, at Frontier Motors. Now, they do have a version of this that they sell at the uh, public library, but it's called the Consumer's Edition, and it's similar to the Kelly Blue Book and the Edmonds online, so uh, it doesn't give me the real values. Now, this book is important because it tells me how much a banker is going to tell you if the car is worth, but let's say the book on this particular car, and I'm going to use an example. I'm going to get into my inventory sheet, and we'll talk about the NED values Real quick for for an example, and um, let's use a car. I've got one here that is. Let's see here. Let's get a good example of one that's quite a bit lower. We've got a vehicle right here that is a Buick Regal. It's a 2012 Buick Regal, which we have in stock. It has 23,000 miles on it. If you call the banker up and they book it out in this book, it's 22. 675. 22,675 is, is what they're going to tell you the book's value is. I can sell the car for $20,700. That's $2,000 under the book value. Now, if you use the banker's book value, you'd be paying $2,000 too much. And that's why, and, and sometimes the Kelly Blue Book and the Edmonds that you get online is the same way. Is they, Sometimes they are similar to the NADA guidebook. Sometimes they're off by $500, sometimes they're off by quite a bit. But uh, normally they're, off, they're within $500, and the reason I'm, I'm telling you folks this is if you use the book values to either price your car, if you're going to sell it yourself, you put it on Craigslist or eBay or autotradercars.com, and you use the guidebooks that are available, you'd be overpricing your car. And the same thing uh, would happen if you were trying to buy that car, if you're using the guidebooks and they tell you it's worth twenty two seven. And I'm telling you, you can buy that car for twenty thousand seven hundred. That's where Frontier Motors comes in. That if you have anybody, that's a friend, relative, neighbor, anybody you know that is looking to buy a car before they put their money down, before they sign the bottom line, you have them call Frontier Motors. My name's Ivan. My partner's name is Ron. We also have two sales managers there. We will get into the auction reports, and and we're not going to just tell you what they're going for. We're we're not going to be able to sell it here for what they're going for. So if a car is going for $22,000, we're not going to tell you to pay $22,000 because that's not going to happen because the dealership's going to have to pay for the shipping. They have to pay the auction fee. They have to pay the buyer, and then they have to make a profit. But let's say I can see that these cars are going for $20,000. I'd say I tell you that after shipping all the expenses, 
Don't pay any more than twenty two to twenty three thousand, even though the book might say it's twenty seven thousand dollars. So the real values that I'm using is quite a bit different than most uh, uh, than most car dealerships are going to give you. And I'm going to let you know, you know if you're going to be buying a brand new car, don't put your money down on that either. Come to Frontier Motors. I have the new car cost guides, which we subscribe to. It's a big old red book like the one I'm holding up if you're watching this on TV. And this book comes out. We get about seven or eight variations of this every two or three months they come out. And the reason we get so many is because prices change. Uh, the, uh, the manufacturers sometimes will introduce a model in the middle of the year. So the model, the new model might be not in the early book, but might be in the late book. And uh, I have had one year where there were five price increases from the manufacturers, and of course we want to give you the current uh, information, but also list the retail and the invoice price. If you subscribe to Consumers Reports, I know that I get a Consumers Reports every month, and I have one in my hand that says the best and worst of 2003, and one of the things that Consumers Reports will do for you is that they will give you the invoice of any car out there and the pricing of any car out there, but they charge you. Twelve dollars for per invoice. I've got the I've got the ad in my uh, right in my hands right here. So consumers reports will give you the same information that I'm talking about, um, but they charge you twelve dollars per car. I don't charge anything. So if you're looking to buy a new car, I don't care if it's a car that's local in town here or if it's an exotic car out of the area. I can tell you what the dealer paid for. I can tell you what the rebates and incentives are, and I can tell you based on the dollars day supply that's available what type of profit you should be paying. If it's a car that's in hot demand, and let's let's talk about the new Corvette coming out. The new Corvette has been restyled. It's called a Stingray. You are not going to be able to buy that car. If I tell you the invoice on the car is forty-five thousand dollars, forget about that. It's not going to happen. Right now, they're charging over list price for that car because. It's in hot demand. But let's say it's a, uh, a, a slow-moving vehicle. Let's say, for example, it's a Chevrolet uh, Trailblazer, or, or I should say Traverse, which is the, the new model. They don't make the Trailblazer anymore. And that car is in, uh, it has 120 days supply. That means you're going to be able to get a good deal very close to the dealer cost or close to the dealer invoice of that car. But I can help you with that. If you do want to join us on the show here, if you can dial 888-476-476. 1007. If you're listening to this on the radio, that's what you want to call. If you're watching this on TV, we have Frontier Motors phone number on the bottom of the screen, which is 488-436-8080. If it's after 6 o'clock and you're watching this, if it's a pre-recorded show, um, you're going to have to leave a message because we're opening. We've got bankers hours at Frontier Motors. And uh, we're only open until 6 o'clock and 4 o'clock on Saturday. And the reason I snicker when I say banker's hours, because most car dealerships are open till 8 o'clock, some of them even till 9 o'clock. I know a lot of car dealerships are open on Sunday. Well, we treat our employees a little better than that. Uh, we close early. We have one shift. Uh, the guys can be with their family every night. And uh, if you want to buy a car from Frontier Motors, you almost have to make an appointment uh, because we're only open until 6 o'clock. Some people in the Pensacola area will have to take off of work to come and see us. But we do have a great website. If you get on uh, Frontier Motors, just Google Frontier Motors, and we are the first Frontier Motors that comes up. I think there's about four or five of them in the nation. But uh, because we sell the most cars, we're the first one that pops up. And you're going to see 297 cars in inventory. I got my new price list this morning. Actually, we have over 300 cars in inventory because I've got another truckload that's not stocked in, that's incoming. But as of this morning, I had 296 units on my inventory sheet with more coming in. That gives you the ability to pretty much pick out whatever price range you want to be. And I had a customer the other day says that, do you ever get anything in the $5,000 range? I says, I don't go out and buy $5,000 cars at the auction because at the auction, the older cars that are in that price range are sold as is. But because we have so many cars with low miles and that are newer under factory warranty, we do take a lot of older cars and trade. And I sold uh, for $5,500 on Saturday, I sold a beautiful 2004 Saturn for somebody that had a $6,000 budget. I was able to sell them a car for $5,500. So we do get cars cars in that are in that price range, and one of the reasons we do that is because we have so many cars that are like new, and I'll give an example. If you are going to be buying a brand new Mercedes at Centennial Imports, where, where I would tell you to go if you're going to buy a brand new Mercedes um, or Volvo, go to Centennial, uh, patronize the local dealerships, shop, uh, shop outside the area first, get online, go to Atlanta, go to Orlando, go to New Orleans and get your best price, then take it to the local dealer and tell them, this is what I found out I can buy that car for, but I'd like to buy it from you guys. And I don't know of any instance where the local dealership wouldn't uh, drop their price uh, to meet any other dealership's uh, price to keep the business local. But if you're going to buy a brand new Mercedes at Centennial, uh, look at an e a class, an E350, and then look at the one that I have, which is a 2013 model with 471 miles on it. Now, somebody would say, well, where'd you get that car? 
Well, I bought it at the auction because they sell it with a green light. The green light means guaranteed. No paint work, clean history report. It's not a lemon law. There's not any issues with it. There's no paint work on the car. This particular car is a non-smoker. Um, we have the original window sticker, and we can save you about $5,000 over the price of a new one. That's just one example. 2013 Dodge Journey. If you're going to go to the local Dodge dealership, Hill Kelly Dodge is our local dealer. If you're going to buy a brand new one, I tell you to go there. If you're going to buy one that's got 1,200 miles on it, you stop in front of your motors and you compare the price of our 1,200-mile uh, uh, Dodge Journey to the brand new one. And if we can't save you between $3,000 and $6,000, I'd be the first one to say, go buy the brand new one. How about a 2012 Honda Accord with 1,200 miles on it, a 2014 Mustang with 1,600 miles on it, a 2011 Kia Sedona with 20 200 miles on it at 2013 our first 2013 avalon which is an xls with leather interior with 2300 miles on it. if you haven't seen the new avalon folks you got to check it out uh, bob tyler's got the uh, the local franchise if you're going to buy a brand new one you go up to bob tyler right here they're absolute gorgeous uh they uh they revitalized that car so it's not like a grandpa car it's actually really cool looking on the inside and the outside the dashboard's phenomenal they've really sported it up a little bit but still kept it has a large car that has a great ride and it's just beautiful it's the first one we got in i've got one with 20 uh 300 miles on it and i'd like you to take a look at that if you're going to buy a brand new one at bob tyler check out ours and one of the things i urge you to do folks if you're going to go to the uh, local dealerships which again i urge you to buy from our local dealerships if you're going to buy brand new but don't worry so much about the list price of the car and don't worry so much about the dock fee and the tag transfer and the battery tax and the tire tax. People get so frustrated because of all the taxes and everything goes with a car. Worry about one figure, and that's the bottom line price of the car. And that's what we call an out-the-door figure. If you have a trade-in, that makes it even easier because you don't know if they're giving you a good price for the trade-in, a bad price for the trade-in. And let's use the uh, Avalon as an example. Let's say you had a trade-in on the Avalon. I'm going to give you one figure on the bottom line. I'm going to give you an out-the-door figure. And let's just say my out-the-door figure, with everything included, is $15,000. That includes taxes, dock fee, your trade-in, your payoff if you've got to pay off. Everything included, mine's $15,000. You go to the local dealerships, and if theirs is $15,000 for a brand new one, I'd say buy the brand new one. Don't buy mine. In the 12 is $6,200 difference. Well, I did the scan on the ID number, and this is a been a totaled out car that was rebuilt. The airbags deployed, all airbags went off, airbags have been replaced, and the vehicle has a salvaged title. But the customer thought they were getting such a great deal. This is what I'm talking about, folks, that sometimes if it's such a good deal, it really isn't such a good deal. Now, if it is, I'd be the first one to say, go up there and buy that car for 12 7 But you know what? At 12 7 the local dealer would have bought the car already. We've got people, if somebody puts their car on Craigslist or eBay or autotradercars.com, if it's a good deal, we're buying the car already. We've got people that do that all day long. And some, every once in a while, I'll, I'll find a customer that, for whatever reason, is selling car way under book value. And, of course, I always put on there to my buyers, I said, be careful because there's something wrong. We had a customer the other day that had a Z, I'm not sure what the, uh, the, the name of the new Camaro is, but it says, I think it's a ZL1. And that is that new supercharged Camaro. Absolutely gorgeous car. I think the car brand new is about $60,000. I'm going to look it up while I'm talking to you. But I saw one on Craigslist for $45,000. And uh, my buyer uh, sent it to me and said, wow, this is a really good deal. He wanted to know if I was interested. I said, heck yeah, I'm interested. So I did a little bit of research on it, and I saw that the uh, Camaro... Um, the cheapest Camaro that has sold the nation that was this model was $53,000. They've got it for sale for $45,000. That says, go get a cashier's check and run to that guy. It was a scam. It was one of those scams. It was one of those deals where, they're told, where they ask you to um, send the money first and uh, get, send the deposit of $2,000, and then they'll send the car. Well, people know better than that. It's called a ZL1. ZL1, and I've got the retail price at $61,000, plus there's some equipment you can add on that. This car was for sale. I think it had like 2,000 miles on, and they were selling it for $45,000 because it was a scam. If you put a car on eBay, I think the disclaimer uh, on eBay or Craigslist is like four pages long 
of what to be careful about. And that leads me into the fact that if you've got a car that you're going to sell it, why not, uh, why not just bring it to us? Just bring it to Frontier Motors at 230 Beverly Parkway. Let me write a check for it. People always ask me how we get our cars. We buy them one at a time. I think on Saturday we bought four cars. Last week alone, I think we bought 12 cars. It was either 12 or 13 cars from private individuals. This wasn't an auction. These weren't trade-ins. These were customers that heard the radio show, saw the TV show, and said, you know, I've got a friend or relative that's selling the car. They're not having good luck. They're scared about having somebody come over to the house and test drive the car, maybe smash it up, maybe rip you off. Or they're scared about um, that uh, they can't get the money for it, that people have bad credit. They go to the credit union. That you take the car off the market. They go, go to credit union on Monday to find out four days later they can't get the loan. So now you've got to start all over again. It's just, a, it's just kind of a rat race. So what you do is you come to Frontier Motors, and you don't even have to stop in. If you're outside the area, give us a description of the car. Maybe a picture of it would be great. The ID number, and I'll do all the reports for you, and I'll put it in my AAX system, which is a dealer track system, which gives me the NADA book value. It gives me the wholesale book value. It gives me the auction report. It gives me the history of reports of the car, and it'll tell me exactly what that car should go for. And I'm pretty good at if I can if I see there's any light there where I can still make a little bit of money I'm not going to get rich off of a car because I'm going to pay you more than wholesale but still where if I mark it up a little bit that my customer is going to get a good deal I'll just write you a check for the car and the fact that you're bringing it to me I don't have to pay for the shipping the expenses the auction fee the buy fee so normally you'll be surprised that the figure that I quote you is not as ridiculous as your local dealer might have given you and I see this happen all the time we had a local dealer appraise a truck this was about two months ago. I appraised the truck for $11,000. A local dealer appraised the truck for $6,500. Now, that's outrageous. That The difference normally isn't that much. But in this particular case, the, the dealer either was screwed up or just didn't like the vehicle. And the customer, number one, said, I'm never going to go back to the dealership. But number two, came back and sold me the car for $11,000. And we were still able to sell that truck at a profit. Now, we didn't make a bunch of money on it, but we were still able to, to sell it for a profit. Frontier Motors is not in Car City. There's a reason we're not in Car City. It's not because we don't want to be in Car City. Because Car City is where customers go because there's got one car dealer after another, after another, after another. I think the last count, there was like 20-some dealerships in Car City. But we didn't want to pay the, for the property. And the difference between Car City and off the beaten path, we're on Beverly Parkway, which is actually only about three blocks, blocks outside of Car City. But years ago when we bought our property, we paid about 100, I think it was like 105 or $115,000 for our property versus over a million dollars for the same property in Car City. Well, that makes a big difference for your local overhead, not just based on the mortgage that we would have had to take if we would have bought a million dollar property, but you have to renovate the million dollar property to put it up to par with what you want and then you also have to buy insurance for that property and you have to pay also have to pay the property taxes well if you come to frontier motors you're going to find that what we're able to do is sell our cars quite a bit uh, for less money than the competition because we don't have that much overhead we're still going to make a profit but we don't have to make a, a, a big profit on our vehicles to be able to um, compete and if we're selling a brand new uh, lexus for example that's a 2013 lexus people say well, why should i buy it from you there's only one reason they buy it from me not, not being a Lexus dealership, and by the way, we do have a 2013 Lexus RX350 that we just purchased, and why would you buy that from us rather than go to over Lexus Mobile? One reason, because I'm able to sell that vehicle for between a 1000 to $1,500 less than you're going to be able to buy it at the franchise dealership because I don't have all the overhead, and that's even if I paid the same. Because let's say, for example, I could sell it for a $1,500 profit, and the Lexus dealership wants to sell it for a $3,000 profit, well, that's a $1,500 price difference. Now, don't come in saying I said I'd sell everything for a $1,500 profit. If it's a very expensive $100,000 car, I might make more than that. And I've seen vehicles already that I sold for a $1,500 loss, not a $1,500 profit, because the market changed. And this happened a couple years ago when the gas price went up to $4 a gallon. We were stuck with a bunch of Suburbans and Tahoes and pickup trucks that we were lucky only to lose $1,500 because the values plummeted so bad. And, of course, when, they, when the gas prices went back down, we were stuck with a bunch of Priuses because nobody cared about the gas prices anymore, and the Priuses' values went down in the toilet, and uh, we, uh, we ended up selling Priuses for a loss because the market churned so much. So just because we're in a car dealership does not make us immune to depreciation. And that's one of the things that we try to stay on top of all the time is that when we get a vehicle in, we have to know the market and what it's going to be right now. And when we, and we have to also have to anticipate the market. Fortunately, the price of gas seems to be pretty stable right now at about $3.30. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that people have gotten used to it. 
And uh, I was reading an article this morning that says that people that are coming to dealerships, their number one criteria about buying a car is gas mileage. Well, the interesting thing is that I saw cars from 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. I don't hear it that much. I've got maybe 50% of the people asking me about the gas mileage, but the other 50% have either done their research already or they could care less because the number one selling vehicle that we have at Frontier Motors is an F-150 pickup truck, which is also, by the way, the number one selling vehicle in the world is an F-150 pickup truck, and people don't... Uh, People know they don't get very good gas mileage. I mean, if you get 18 miles a gallon with an F-150, you're doing, you're doing pretty darn good. And, uh, and they're selling like hotcakes. So it seems to me that the, the gas mileage doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. I see a lot of people, especially in the cars, put the number one emphasis they're looking at is what the car looks like. Um, the, uh, the appearance of the car, the shape of the car, is it a cool looking car, the inside of the car. And they do ask about other things like safety features, but it's down further on the list. You know, the interesting thing also that I noticed from uh, looking at what, cust what uh, co consumers are looking at is the price isn't that big of a deal for the customers, especially when they're buying a used car. Of course, price is important, but it was like number six on the list. The dealership, the location had a lot to do with it, with the, the proximity of where you're at. A lot of people didn't want to try out, travel outside the area to buy a car. The selling process was one of the big things that customers looked at. And I'm happy to report that one of the reasons that we're the number one dealership, independent dealership in Pensacola, actually in the whole state of Florida, is because I think it's not just the cars that we have, 300 cars in inventory, and the good prices. It's the process that happens when you come into the dealership, whether it be by phone, by email, or just you actually traveling to the dealership. The, the way we treat the customers, our, our, our salespeople unlock every car every morning. So if you come to the dealership, you can browse at your leisure. We print... The the pricing off every day that we can hand to our customers. So you uh, and it's all alphabetical. So if you're looking at Acuras, it'll tell you there's a 2003 Acura CLS Coupe. Um, it's got 80,000 miles on it, and we've got it on the internet for $9,900. And uh, if you look at the BMW, we have a 2011 328 BMW, um, and it has uh, 23,000 miles on it. It's 27.5. So we have them all listed for you. So the pricing is right there. Uh, if that's not our bottom line price, a lot of times we'll have the internet price on there, which is our bottom line price, no haggling. And once in a while we'll have a price on there that we still have a little bit of room with. So within a matter of minutes, what I'm going to do is once you like the car, you, the next question, of course, is that the best you can do? And I'm going to see if I can sharpen my pencil. I'm going to give you the asking price, the discounted price, the value of your trade-in, then the balance. Then we're going to add the taxes, the dock fee, the tag transfer. I'm going to circle the bottom line price. And we're going to make you a copy of that if you're not ready to buy at that instance. And then we're going to let you go. And let's say you're looking at Acura. Go over to Acura Mobile and see if they've got one of those Acuras in stock just like we have. And let's see what they can do. If they beat our price, we're the first one to throw in a towel and say, hey, this time we lost it, go buy that. Go buy by them. Fortunately, that very rarely ever happens. Most of the time, I've already done my research, and the cool thing about my AAX price driver, when I do, uh, it's got a, what they call a market driver. And when I hit my market driver, it tells me a particular car that I have in inventory and what everybody else is selling that car for. So if you come to me and say, well, I see this, uh, uh, this 2010 Tacoma pickup truck you have, uh, at a uh, price of $20,000 is way high, well, I can tell you what other 2010 Tacomas are out there, and I can either say, you know what, you're right. Mine is too expensive, and based on that, I have to drop the price, or I can tell you, wait a minute, I'm being everybody else's price by $2,000, so you can't be telling me that I'm overpriced because I'm not. So we can go either way. Most customers have done their research already. Some people just tell you that they found a cheaper one, like the customer with the Honda. He didn't know that when he looked at his S2000 for $12,000, which is a phenomenal deal, that it was a totaled out car. He didn't really know that. All he looked at is that, man, you need to adjust your price, Mr. Frontier, because yours at 18000 is way over. By the way, we sold him the car. That S2000 is sold. So he ended up buying it from us because he said, boy, I didn't really realize that. And that leads me also, uh, customers, and not just the way that we uh, help our customers when they come in, but also if you're going to buy a car at another dealership or a private individual, do you know that to run a Carfax report right now is almost $40? It's crazy how much a history report is. Carfax does a lot of advertising, so they're quite a bit more than the other, the rival, which is AutoCheck. Well, Frontier Motors, we use AutoCheck and Carfax to do our history reports. And if you're going to buy a car at the side of the road or from Aunt Ellie or, you, uh, or just a private individual, don't, don't pay for it. Just call us. Give us the ID number at Frontier Motors, and we will run the history report for you at no charge. We'll also tell you what the pricing on that car should be. So let's say the history report is clean.
And uh, we're going to do the, the history on a, let's say it just say ha- happens to be a 2006 Honda S2000 clean history report. Hey, by the way, we've got one in stock. Ours is 18.9. How much is theirs? Well, theirs is 22.5. Well, that doesn't mean you should run and buy ours. That just means use our information to get the other dealer to drop the price or the private individual to, hey, Frontier Motors got this car for 18.9. You either drop the price down to that or I'm going to go to them, to them and buy it. And a lot of times people will call us up a couple of days later and say, hey, it worked. This is very, very important if you have a trade-in. If you come and I appraise the trade for $10,000, and let's say you go to the Lexus dealership in Mobile and you already know that the price of the new Lexus you're looking at is the best price out there because you've contacted 16 dealers and you find out they they got a great price at $30,000 on the new Lexus, and then you throw them the keys for the trade-in and they appraise it for $8,000, that ain't going to work. Uh-uh-uh. Frontier Motors said these cars were $10,000, and they're willing to write me the check for it. And you know what you can do? You can actually trade the car over there. That way you save a little bit of money on taxes, and I'll buy the car right from them. That way you get the best of both worlds. You get the higher appraisal, and you save a little taxes. Because if you're buying a $30,000 car, and you're getting $10,000 for years, that's a balance of $20,000. Well, now you only have to pay the taxes on the $20,000. If you sell me the car, now you've got to pay taxes on the new car on 30000 That's about a $700 difference. Why not get the best of both worlds? Now, a lot of times, they never sell me the car. The used car manager just re- reappraises the car at the $10,000, and they end up keeping it. But I helped you get a deal. And you know the reason that we do this? Because even though you bought that brand new car down the road, the next time you're in the market for a car or you know anybody else that's in the market for a used car, I know where you're going to send them. You send them to the people that helped you get the deal, which was Frontier Motors. You send them to the people that gave you the free history report, that give you the advice of whether it's a good car, bad car, uh, that gave you the advice on your car, what you should get for it. These are all reasons that you send people to Frontier Motors and really has put us on the map. I think the last time they do a survey once a year, and uh, last year we were like the 17th largest independent dealership in the nation based on customer referral on repeat business. 70% of our customers come from referrals or repeats, which in a used car industry is unheard of because people really could care less where they buy a used car. But at Frontier Motors, we made such an impact on how we do business to the customer, they keep coming back and back and back. So when you are in the market, might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but what if your car gets totaled the next day or the transmission falls out of your car? You come to Frontier Motors. Number one, if your car gets totaled, come to us, and we'll give you the value on the car, make sure the insurance is giving you the right price. But number two, We'll tell you where we can find that car for if we don't have a lot, how much it's going to be, and how long it takes us to get the car for you. Free appraisals at Frontier Motors, free history reports, free buy figures, which means that buy figures what I'll write the check for, free advice on which car is a good car or bad car. We've got the Consumers Reports. By the way, Consumers Reports is not free. We subscribe to it. We have it on our computer, and we have it uh, at the dealership. We can tell you which car is a good car or bad car. We can tell you which car you can tow. I had a customer the other day wanted to know, I want to tow my car behind my motorhome, and he was out to buy a car that couldn't be towed. I looked it up, and I said, I got the towing guide right here. You can't tow this particular car. I think it was a Pathfinder you wanted to tow. It says you can't tow it unless you've got, modi- you got to put a thousand of dollars in the modification of this particular car. So well, we were able to give him some free advice, and hopefully he's going to buy that new vehicle that is towable at Frontier Motors. 230 Beverly Parkway. Our phone number is 436-8080. Remember, everybody, including you, is driving a used car. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you the same. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier. We've got the right price. Frontier. We'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead French.